first reading talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the backstory is that when the Babylonians came over and conquered all of the Israelites, they deported lots and lots of the people, including some of the brightest young people, among whom was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And when the king wanted servants, kind of advisors, to, to work in his, in his palace, he asked them for the best and the brightest, and he found these three young men, and he, he kind of liked them. And Nebuchadnezzar decided, I guess he got bored, decided that he was going to erect this giant metal god, and everybody would have to come, and whenever they played the music, da -da 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 -da, everybody would have to bow down and worship this false god. Well, some of the king's other servants said, look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're not bending down. They're not? No. And he called them over and he said, when the music plays, you need to bend down and bow to the God that I've made. And they said, we can't. And he said, if you don't do it, I will throw you in that red-hot furnace. And they said, he said, he said how is your God going to help you then? He said, we worship the only God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If he can save us, he will, but even if he doesn't save us, we'll never bend a knee to another God. And the king got so angry at, the, at their insistence that he said, fire that furnace up, and he got all of his soldiers to throw more and more fuel into the fire until it was white hot. He said, bind their hands and throw them into that fire. We'll see if their God saves them. And these giant soldiers threw them into the fire, and the fire was so hot that it burnt up the soldiers. They died right there. And then the king watched, waiting for them to burn. But to his amazement, he, he saw them walking around as if they were at the beach. No flames touched them at all. And he said to one of his other advisors, he said, didn't we throw three of them in there? Why are there four? And one of them looks like an angel. Well, there was an angel. And he protected them. As a matter of fact, when, when Nebuchadnezzar said, come out of the furnace, they didn't even smell like smoke. God protected them through the whole thing. But the amazing thing about the story is they said, if God can save us, he will. But even if he doesn't choose to save us, we will not worship another god. Even though it was hundreds of years before, they were living out the words of the Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Sometimes we pray and we pray and we pray for something and it seems like God's not answering our prayers. But God listens to our prayers with the heart of a loving father and sometimes he has other plans. And his plans are always for our good in some way or another, but we don't always see it. Sometimes we even get angry at him. God, why didn't you answer my prayer? I prayed all, a whole novena to you. And I fasted from chocolate during Lent, and I did this and I did that. Maybe God had a plan that was better. I remember when we were in seminary, the, the priest who was the rector of the seminary was kind of serious. We were doing something in the, in the cafeteria, and he usually came in the shortcut to come into the back door. And they said, he can't come in yet. He can't come in yet. Go stall him. So they sent me out. I don't know why. But I saw him, and I said, oh, you can't go in that door. What do you mean I can't go in that door? I'm the rector. They said, you can't. They're, they're doing something in there. You, you, you have to use the other door. So he goes to use the other door, and as he's walking, I'm talking. I, I have to ask you a question. And I started asking him nonsense. And he, he was getting angrier and angrier. And he was very polite, but his face was getting red. He said, I'm hungry. I want to eat. Can we talk during dinner? But wait, one more question. And finally, we got in there, and he was just livid. And as they opened, threw open the doors, everyone screamed, happy birthday. And there was his mom and his dad and his sisters and all of the seminarians. And he just started to laugh. He said, I was really upset with you. But he didn't see the big picture. There was more to the story that he didn't see. And I'm glad he 
appreciated the surprise because he's a bishop now. <laughs> but sometimes we do that to God. We don't trust that he loves us. And if he loves us, he wants the best for us. And if he wants the best for us, sometimes he doesn't answer prayers the way we think he should. But it doesn't mean he loves us. The words of an old Garth Brooks song, some of God's most precious gifts are unanswered prayer. Sometimes we pray for things that are not in his will and not for our good. And so God takes those prayers with the gentlest, most loving of hands and answers them the way he knows. It's for our greater good and for his greater glory. Let the church say amen. amen. Together let us rise and offer our prayers and our needs before the Lord's altar.